Hillary, I just, uh, just wish that I could have helped more. Oh, no, it was a big help just having you listen. <laughs> Must have seemed pretty strange. I know most people don't panic so much when someone they're fond of proposes. Well, I really respect you for wanting to be absolutely sure. I'm just so afraid of hurting Derek. And at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to lose him while I'm trying to make up my mind and discover he was Mr. Wright. Well, if he loves you and he says he does, I'm sure that he, he wants to give you all the time that you need to, to sort your feelings out. Yeah, I guess you're right. I've had this really bad case of sentimental attachment, and my common sense tells me I should just forget about it. It's standing in my way. And at the same time, I'm finding that really hard. Should we take Derek already feels really threatened by my feelings for Kelly, and he tries to make a joke out of it. You know, there has been such a wonderful change in Derek, and he's so much more confident now. And I just don't want to destroy that by making him feel that he's second best. You know, Hillary, I really think that the two of you have a good chance of working out a relationship because you, you care so deeply about each other. Well, I've got to get back to my next patient, but if you need to talk ever again, I'm, uh, I'm available. Thanks, sir. Come on, Floyd. I'm, uh... I know Morgan would love to have you there, too. You can bring your guitar. We could have a, a Floyd Parker concert on the patio. Uh, not tonight, Kelly. Uh, unless Katie changes her mind. Well, Katie? No, sorry. I'm not up to it. Oh, Hillary, you, know, you and Derek can't let me down. See, we're having this uh, cookout at Ed's patio so everybody can meet my dad. Well, I, I, I want to come. It's just there's a little problem. Derek is going to have an appointment with uh, Nola after work, so I don't know what time he's going to be oh. free. Well, I'm sure glad Nola has somebody like Derek for legal advice and all. Hey, you're like the Queen of Sheba, not a care in the world. What do you want? You know, your boss up in Central Filing doesn't know where you are. So? So where are you going to be when you lose this job? I'll tell you where you're going to be. You're going to be up the creek without a paddle. And don't come to me for handouts, because I'm changing jobs, and i got to watch my What have my you got box. to hand out anyway, Darlene? Oh, forget it. I'm looking for a new job anyway. Like what? Well, the only other job you've ever had was that thing in the temporary office help office, and that's the one that got you the job here. Well, I've got other ideas. And maybe one day you'll come to me for a handout, and maybe you'll get it, and maybe you won't. Yeah, well, I won't hold my breath. Well, I can hardly blame you for hiding down here. I don't see how you can come back in this place after what you did at Kelly. It wasn't easy, but I did it. Because I have guts. Because I made up my mind, but I didn't care what people around here thought of me. To think I almost let you talk me into marrying Floyd because it was the right and proper thing to do so people around here would forgive me. Forgive me. But see, Tony, the thing is that people seem to forget is that it could have been Kelly's baby because he did find me attractive and he did make love to me. Yeah, you've got something, but... Uh... I don't know if it's guts or just a hard head. Are you still hanging on to that stuff about Kelly? Because if you are, you better get up there and talk to that shrink McIntyre, because it's about the sickest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, you want to talk about sick relationships? There's one for you, Kelly and Hillary. And it's been going on for a long time, even before he knew Morgan. And it's going on even now, after he's married. How can you blame Kelly, huh? And that Hillary's a foxy thing. We'll continue with part two of The Guiding Light in a moment. The Guiding Light. This portion is presented by Downey, the fabric softener that makes your clothes smell April fresh. And by delicious mountain-grown Folgers, mountain-grown for rich flavor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, come here. <laughs> I suppose you know that you were brilliant in that meeting. Oh, thank you, darling. That wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> of course, I could never have driven home my points with quite such verve if Ross hadn't floundered through the whole meeting. <laughs> well, it was obliging of him, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh, to sit there and see H.B. hesitate at first, and then to see Diane positively curdling in her chair when he suggested, well, perhaps they should have a shorter-term arrangement than they'd originally thought of. I'll drive home our points during dinner. 
Now, Daddy, don't get too overconfident. You know Diane is going to be at dinner. Well, that woman doesn't frighten me. Although I will admit I'm just as glad Ross decided not to come. Yes, that's another point for our side. You know, Alan hasn't even showed up for one meal with H.B., and mm. now Ross is ducking out of this one. Well, I can't imagine that H.B. is too happy about any of it. Oh, he isn't he? I know that for a fact. Oh, he has a certain respect for Ross and Diane, but he resents the fact that Alan's left the meetings entirely up to those two. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't help wondering what's bothering Ross. I have never, never in all my life seen him so depressed. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ross. Hello. Would you like to join us for a drink? No, thank you. Oh. Oh, oh uh, Diane isn't here. Uh, is the meeting over? Yes, but Diane is in there repairing the damage that was done. May take a while. Oh, well, I'll just leave these over here for her, and then I have to get on over to Ed's. Oh, would you like a lift, Jennifer? I'm going out by myself. Oh, uh, well, I think I'd better get home and change first. Oh, mm. well, that's a good idea. I think I'll do the same. Hmm. Excuse me, Ross, are you planning to uh, stop by and see Amanda tonight? No, Jennifer, I wasn't planning on it. Oh, well, I don't mean to push. It's, it's just that she has been asking for you. All right, I'll make a point of going over and seeing her as soon as the meetings are over. Well, they may be over by morning if H.B. decides that the short-term deal is all you'll risk. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Have Bye, a Daddy. lovely dinner. Thank Successful you. one. Oh, and I'll be at Ed's if you need to call me with any news. Ross, I'd, um... Not going any more pleasure junkets, if I were you. They seem to be taking their toll. Bye. Good night. Ross, now you have always been a realist. Why don't you abandon the sinking ship, swinging Amanda's votes over to Vanessa and me? It isn't too late. Ah, you're mistaken, Henry. It is much too late. Well, as you say, but uh, I hate to see you end up a loser. Sorry, Henry. Oh. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Bye, Rose. Night, Henry. Night. I think that smile's just for me. I don't read smiles, I read eyes. He's got that same worried look. How'd the meeting go? Not well. Good guys are losing ground. <laughs> what good guys? There are no good guys. You may have a point. Well, it's only a meeting. Isn't it? You know, Henry Chamberlain says that I'm a loser. And perhaps he's right. How dare you believe that? How dare you even say those words out loud, Ross? I won't have it. I won't. Do you think so little of me that I would fall in love with a loser? I like those words. Well, it's no secret. I fell, I tumbled, I somersaulted head over heels in love with you. Oh, Lord, you don't know how much I needed to hear that. Well, good, and I'm real glad I said it. And I'm going to say it over and over and over and over again until you're sick of hearing it. Or until you see yourself the way I see you. Because you're a winner. You're the winner on all time, champ, and that's who I love. That does help. In some strange way. Makes the stakes higher. Stakes. Hello? Jackie? It's Diane Ballard. Before we say anything else, let me congratulate you on your new baby girl. You and Justin must be very proud. Yes, we are. I had a rather puzzling message in my office to call you. Well, I'm sorry it puzzled you, Diane. I only wish it could have been as clear as the message we got through Ross. Well, news travels fast in these parts. I'm glad Ross is following through so promptly. Diane, I want to see you and talk to you face to face. No, thank you. <laughs> you always were one for emotional one-to-one -one scenes. That doesn't appeal to me at all. I told Ross exactly what I want where Philip is concerned. It's up to Ross and you and your husband to work it out. If it were only the three of us involved, we'd know just how to deal with you. But there's Philip, too. I don't have to tell you how important his welfare is to me. Yes, you know, I've always known that you were obsessive about Philip. Now that I know why, well, let's just say that was my inspiration for the whole idea. How can you be so c c 
cold and calculating when you're talking about a, ruining a young boy's life. Jackie, this is really becoming pointless. I have a very important dinner meeting to get to, so if you don't mind... Yes, I do mind. I mind very much what you're trying to do, Diane. I mind that you are a selfish, scheming human being who's never had a thought for anyone or anything. Except, of course, your, except your uh, own obsession with Alan, which will never come to... is exactly what I thought he'd be. Yeah, that's what I thought when I met him today. <laughs> you know, Morgan, it is so good to see you smiling again, because I can tell you were really pretty upset after talking to Nola today. Yeah, I can never describe the feeling I had in the pit of my stomach when I heard her voice and I turned around and I saw her standing there. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, I can't believe the nerve that she has. Yeah, well, that's something that Nola has a lot of, is nerve. Yeah, but... I hope that's the last conversation I have to have with her. <laughs> but, um... But what? I'm just glad that I finally faced her and told her off. Oh, Morgan. What's that for? I am just so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Michael and Ed and Frank over there in the pool. Oh, no. They're like a bunch of teenagers. Boy, it surely brings back memories. Oh. I'm really glad to see Mike relaxing. I know he's been concerned about hope. Yes, he has, and so have I. I just wish that Michael would remember that Hope is no longer a little girl. Oh, Bert. Yes, dear. I'm so glad that you like my apartment. Like it? I didn't even recognize it. I can't believe that's the room that Ed used as a store. <laughs> but may I make what, just one suggestion? Maybe you could use a little more furniture. <laughs> <laughs> more than the sofa bed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why don't you come on over and look through my attic again, see uh, what you can find. You're gonna be sorry you said that. No, I won't. Uh oh. Oh, look, they're mermen. <laughs> and, honey, this is your uh, fruit juice, and it's here for anybody who wants it. And any other drinks will be Thanks, over sir. there. The bartender will take care uh -huh. of them. And, Michael, you are elected. <laughs> I should have known as much. <laughs> okay. It's so good to have you here. Oh, well, thank you very much. I feel the same way. Tell me something. When do you expect that husband of yours to come home? What time? Oh, I don't know. You know, the hours at the hospital, and even though his godfather is the chief of staff. <laughs> you see, Morgan and I have this little running joke going. Right? Uh, no, it's no joke to Kelly. I mean, he, he really gets upset. He, he's so afraid that I'm going to use the, your relationship to get him privileges at the hospital. That's why I don't want him to ever find out that little white lie that I used to with the phone company. The other Morgan, day. I told you that your secret is safe with me. Okay, good. <laughs> What secret's that? <clears throat> oh, well, what are you doing here? It's only two o'clock. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you're not going to get off the hook that easily. Well, can we talk about it later? Let me see. Uh, it's, uh, I heard you say uh, a secret about the phone being put in, and Ed's not supposed to say anything to me about it. I heard that much. You know, I might as well tell you, because I know how stubborn you are. Right. So, well, what happened was, when the telephone company was giving me problems about getting the phone right away, I kind of told them that you were already a doctor and that we were staying in the chief of staff's guest house and he insisted you have a phone right away. That's all. Why didn't you tell me this that night? When I complimented you on, on, on getting the phone in so quickly? Well, because I, I didn't think that you... I mean, I had already told him the whole story and, and I... <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Listen, if that is the worst little white lie you ever tell me, then we're home free. <laughs> Besides, you only bent the truth a little. You turned Ed's garage into a cottage and my clerkship into an MD. Well, I can't blame you for uh, building me up a little, can I? Besides, Justin had already offered to uh, call the phone company for me anyway, and I said, no, my own clever wife has already thought of that. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to change and take a swim. How about you? Me too.